youth, okay, but there's still a problem. It's the statement, all problems are interpersonal relationship problems. I can see that the feeling of inferiority is an interpersonal relationship worry, and that it has certain effects on us. And I accept as logical the idea that life is not a competition. I cannot see other people as comrades, and somewhere inside me I think of them as enemies. This is clearly the case. But the thing I find puzzling is, why does Adler place so much importance on interpersonal relationships? Why does he go so far as to say to all of them? Philosopher, the issue of interpersonal relationships is so important that no matter how broadly it is addressed, it never seems to suffice. Last time I told you, what you are lacking is the courage to be happy. You remember that, right? Youth, I couldn't forget it if I tried. Philosopher, so, why do you see other people as enemies, and why can't you think of them as your comrades? It is because you have lost your courage and you are running away from your life tasks. Youth, my life tasks? Philosopher, right. This is a crucial point. In Adlerian psychology, clear objectives are laid out for human behavior and psychology. Youth, what sort of objectives? Philosopher, first, there are two objectives for behavior, to be self-reliant and to live in harmony with society. Then, the objectives for the psychology that supports these behaviors are the consciousness that I have the ability and the consciousness that people are my comrades. Youth, just a moment. I'm writing this down. There are the following two objectives for behavior, to be self-reliant and to live in harmony with society. And there are the following two objectives for the psychology that supports these behaviors, the consciousness that I have the ability and the consciousness that people are my comrades. Okay, I can see that it is a crucial subject to be self-reliant as an individual while living in harmony with people and society. It seems to tie in with everything we've been discussing. Philosopher, and these objectives can be achieved by facing what Adler calls a life tasks. Youth, then, what are life tasks? Philosopher, let's think of the word a life as tracing back to childhood. During childhood, we are protected by our parents and can live without needing to work. But eventually, the time comes when one has to be self-reliant. One cannot be dependent on one's parents forever, and one has to be self-reliant mentally, of course, and self-reliant in a social sense as well, and one has to engage in some form of work which is not limited to the narrow definition of working at a company. Furthermore, in the process of growing up, one begins to have all kinds of friend relationships. Of course, one may form a love relationship with someone that may even lead to marriage. If it does, one will start a marital relationship, and if one has children, a parent-child relationship will begin. Adler made three categories of the interpersonal relationships that arise out of these processes. He referred to them as an tasks of work, tasks of friendship and a tasks of love, and altogether as a life tasks. Youth, are these tasks the obligations one has as a member of society? In other words, things like labor and payment of taxes? Philosopher, no, please think of this solely in terms of interpersonal relationships. That is, the distance and depth in one's interpersonal relationships. Adler sometimes used the expression three social ties to emphasize the point. Youth, the distance and depth in one's interpersonal relationships? Philosopher, the interpersonal relationships that a single individual has no choice but to confront when attempting to live as a social being, these are the life tasks. They are indeed tasks in the sense that one has no choice but to confront them. Youth, would you be more specific? Philosopher, first, let's look at the tasks of work. Regardless of the kind of work, there is no work that can be completed all by oneself. For instance, I am usually here in my study writing manuscripts for a book. Writing is completely autonomous work that I cannot have someone else do for me. But then there is the presence of the editor and many others, without whose assistance the work would not be realized, from the people who handle book design and printing, to the distribution and bookstore staff. Work that can be completed without the cooperation of other people is in principle unfeasible. Youth, broadly speaking, I suppose so. Philosopher, however, considered from the viewpoint of distance and depth, interpersonal relationships of work may be said to have the lowest hurdles. 
Interpersonal relationships of work have the easy-to-understand common objective of obtaining good results, so people can cooperate even if they don't always get along, and to some extent they have no choice but to cooperate. And as long as a relationship is formed solely on the basis of work, it will go back to being a relationship with an outsider when working hours are over or one changes jobs. Youth, yes, so true. Philosopher, and the ones who get tripped up in the interpersonal relationships at this stage are the people referred to as NETs, the young person not in education, employment or training, or shut-ins, a person confined indoors. Youth, who? Wait a minute. Are you saying that they don't try to work simply because they want to avoid the interpersonal relationships that are associated with work, not that they don't want to work or that they're refusing to do manual labor? Philosopher, putting aside the question of whether or not they are conscious of it themselves, interpersonal relationships are at the core. For example, a man sends out resumes to find work and gets interviews, only to be rejected by one company after another. It hurts his pride. He starts to wonder what the purpose in working is if he has to go through such things. Or he makes a big mistake at work. The company is going to lose a huge sum of money because of him. Feeling utterly hopeless, as if he's plunged into darkness, he can't bear the thought of coming into work the following day. None of these are examples of the work itself becoming disagreeable. What is disagreeable is being criticized or rebuked by others through the work, getting labeled as having no ability or being incompetent or unsuited to the work, and hurting the dignity of one's irreplaceable self. In other words, everything is an interpersonal relationship issue. 